We continue to see the Ninth Circuit try and operate around the precedent created by the Bruin decision. We heard oral arguments last week in the May v. Bonta case where your right to self-defense and carrying a firearm hangs in the balance. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel today. That is right, we saw oral arguments for the May v. Bonta case last week. That is our challenge to the sensitive places portions of Senate Bill 2 from last year. Here to talk us through it, he is the volunteer president of CRPA. That is Chuck Michelle. Chuck, thanks for coming on. Always a pleasure, fellas. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. But before we get into that, guys, it is working. If you want to directly contribute to Second Amendment litigation and legislative efforts, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to these videos. Hit that little notification bell so that when we come out with this information, it is the first thing to hit your Dropbox as it comes out. So, Chuck, uh, let's just kind of dive on in really quick here. Uh, maybe Bonta... It's been going on uh, at, at least from the beginning of this year. There's been a lot of action. Can you just kind of round out what the lawsuit is uh, and what's taken us here to the Ninth Circuit? Yeah, I remember after Bruin came down, the state had to start issuing concealed weapons permits, concealed carry permits, licenses, and uh, couldn't couldn't use good cause as, a, as an excuse to not issue them anymore. Uh, so what they did try and do is pass a law that makes CCWs useless by making them invalid in most of the public areas in the state and private areas uh, by de designating those areas as sensitive because the Bruin decision said that in certain areas, certain sensitive places, you can ban firearms entirely. Uh, but what the state did was make, in most of those places, firearms are banned already unless you have a license, a CCW. So what the state did was, because more people were applying for CCWs, they passed a law that said, well, your CCWs are invalid in all these places, which makes them effectively useless. But that's the the games that they're playing. That's the the vindictiveness that the state is, is, is resorting to to try and frustrate the ruling in Bruin. Remember, all these places where the CCW would be invalid now, people have been carrying with CCWs in those areas for 100 years. There's never been a problem with CCW holders carrying firearms in any of those places. So, uh, but they don't care. They just don't want anybody to be able to get a CCW. Well, I think that uh, is a is a pretty good indication of what the status quo is, right? And the status quo plays a, a pretty decent role in the in the preliminary injunction that was uh, granted at the federal district court, right? Yes, the status quo, CCWs have been able, CCW holders have been able to carry in all these places for 100 years. Uh, and the luckily, the panel, apparently this panel, which was hostile at oral argument, but it uh, denied the state's request for a stay so that SB2 could go into effect and all your licenses would be invalidated. Uh, so they're still valid for now. The, uh you can carry in all these places if you have a CCW, and I encourage any, everybody to apply and get one. Uh, but now we're going to have to wait and see what the three-judge panel that heard the oral arguments does uh, about uh, the constitutionality of the law. Well, I, and, you know, in past conversations, you know, we've kind of discussed with other lawsuits uh, just sort of how is the Ninth Circuit going to try to circumvent Bruin? Uh, are they going to uphold it the way we think they ought to, or are they not? Um, especially with cases like the Duncan case, where you see some weird things skipping the skipping the three-judge panel the second time around, going directly to the, <laughs> the en banc, where they just kind of have an argument amongst themselves whether or not that should have been done. I felt like you you could interpret on, on this oral argument uh, sort of the same attempts uh, of circumvention. I, I'm kind of curious what you thought. You know, one of the judges asked both the state's attorneys and our attorneys, uh, why is it that we should, uh, you know, go against the precedent that's already been set uh, at the Second Circuit? Uh, so there's a there's a case that came out of New York where they upheld sensitive places. Why would this three judge panel be so concerned with with the Second Circuit? Well, they they know that if they create a circuit split the United States Supreme Court is much more likely to take the case. And they're look and simpler than that, they're just looking for an excuse to uphold this law. And the Second Circuit did that with most of the 
of the uh, New York, uh, uh, the equivalent of an SB2 in New York. Uh, so they're just looking to that decision as an excuse to rule effectively the same, essentially the same way. Yeah, I think it's actually kind of ironic because it was the Bruin decision that came out of New York, right, where the Supreme Court said that they got it wrong. Uh, so if you're looking at somebody's track record, I would think maybe you uh, don't want to uh, skew that way. But, you know, in the arguments themselves, we did see the state the state attorneys uh, kind of continue and lead this panel down that path uh, of circumventing Bruin. I thought that our attorney did a great job of kind of snapping them back and saying, no, you know, there's a precise way to use the analogs of history and there's a precise way to use the tradition of history. Is that a trend that you just kind of see continuing going forward here, though, with the state kind of helping that panel along in circumventing Bruin? Yes, they're trying see Bruin set up a two step uh, question test. It's not really the first question. The first part is not a test. It's just whether or not the text of the Second Amendment covers the conduct and it covers almost all conduct. And it certainly cover covers carrying firearms in public for self-defense or other lawful purposes. Uh, and then the second part is, is there a historical tradition of laws that, that govern the same type of conduct? And are those historical laws similar enough to indicate that the founders would have tolerated the modern day law? And the whole game is now being played about how similar those laws have to be and where they can be from. So the states seizing on these territorial laws, not states, they're just, uh, you know, frontier territories where uh, there were some of these laws that were similar, and but but those are outliers. And, and there were some of those in the Bruin case too, and the Supreme Court said, we're not gonna go by one law and say that in a, in a territory where there was no real you know, vetting of the, the the constitutionality of the law to begin with and say that that justifies a modern day law. So the, the big thing was one of these judges apparently hadn't even, the one who was being most aggressive apparently even hadn't read the Bruin decision because she's saying, why do we have to ask why the founders or why the, or, or the uh, historical law was passed? Well, the reason is because that's what determines whether or not it's similar enough. And that's what Bruin said. You have to look at how the conduct was regulated in a historical law, and you have to look at why the conduct was regulated that way in a historical law. And so none of the none of the historical laws that the state pointed out were passed for the same reason as this one was, which was basically vindictiveness in, in, in truth, but they're trying to hide behind public, general public safety. And th that's not why uh, uh, historical laws, that's not, they're not the same. The, the historical laws that the state points out are not the same as the modern justification. Not this. The, nothing is this broad. Nothing. This is is this all encompassing. Nothing takes away the lice, the rights of licensees who have been vetted, and tested, and 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 background checks done. Takes their right to to carry even with the license away. So I guess you know a couple of different a couple of different things here. You talk about uh, the status quo. Uh, and how influential that can be in, you know, whether or not you enforce a, a law or not when it's going through litigation. You also mentioned that we had a hostile panel here on the Ninth Circuit. What is your assessment kind of going forward here uh, with, you know, whether or not they took that understanding of Bruin from our attorneys? Uh, and how do you see this case actually playing out within the Ninth Circuit? Uh, well, they may. There's a couple of things they could do. They may. First of all, it's clear one judge is very hostile, less clear about at least one other one, and then the one that seems to be against us, but not as against us as the other one. Um, so we might get a split decision with a dissent, um, but they might also hold it up uh, until Duncan gets decided, because Duncan is going to have to address that methodology that, that what the what how how analogous a historical law has to be to demonstrate a historical tradition of regulating the conduct kind of kind of conduct that's being regulated by the modern day law. Uh, so they might wait till Duncan on bonk decision comes down, see if they get any guidance from that. Also, the Antana case, which is the New York sensitive places case. Uh, there's a cert petition pending in the United States Supreme Court right now, and uh, the, the you know the it's it's likely that the Supreme Court is going to take 
some of these cases sooner rather than later. And they also might resolve some of these questions in their ruling that's coming down in June in the Rahimi case. So ultimately, the Supreme Court is going to have to make it crystal clear, crystal clearer, because it's already clear uh, what the how the test is applied when you're evaluating the constitutionality of a gun control law under the Second Amendment, because courts, courts don't, some judges are frankly so biased that they want to advance a policy. The policy decisions were decided in 1791. The founders recognized that firearms have all kinds of social utility, all kinds of value, self-defense, defense against tyranny, defense against marauders, criminals, wild animals. Uh, and, and they made a policy that uh, even if they are abused by some criminals, uh, their overwhelming value to society is unquestioned, and they, that right needs to be protected to possess, to choose to possess those firearms for all lawful purposes. Well, I guess uh, in the case that it does kind of become a waiting game, if we're waiting for uh, the Supreme Court or for Duncan, we are kind of on the right side of it, right? We have the injunction in place. They are not enforcing the sensitive places portion of Senate Bill 2. Uh, any final thoughts on this, Chuck, as, as we uh, see these things unfold throughout the year? Well, the thing to keep in mind going forward is, I mean, th this is a battle that we should absolutely 100% win, but it's it's becoming very judge dependent, unfortunately. And the individual judges try and influence the process to advance their bias uh, and interpret Br Bruin the way that they want to so that it doesn't really, you know, they, they want to pull the, the Second Amendment's teeth so that it doesn't really protect anything. The Second Amendment has been called liberty's teeth. They want to pull the teeth so that they can ban guns, essentially all types of guns from all types of people from all types of places. So the judges and who sits on the bench become more and more important. And who appoints those judges is the president. And so the election coming up is going to determine uh, what kind of judges get on the bench, not just in the courts of appeal, but also in the Supreme Court, quite likely. And I think that's really the long game that the gun ban lobby and the lawyers that are really coaching all these politicians at the, the lawyers at every town law, which is Mike Bloomberg's uh, law firm, basically, but to advance gun control, uh, that's what they're hoping for. They hope that Biden gets reelected and he gets to appoint a couple Supreme Court judges and they can overturn Bruin. Well, something we're definitely going to continue and follow along with uh, alongside all of the other litigative efforts that we have. Chuck, I want to thank you for uh, taking the time and walking us through this. Always a pleasure, guys. Absolutely. And guys, if you like content and video like these and you want to continue and support this fight, both in the courts and in the legislature, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to these videos. Hit that little notification bell so as these things happen in the world, they are coming to you as, they, as we drop the videos. Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.